Okay, um, by moving you two onto the table, I, I just want to sort of wrap up this discussion so everyone gets to say something. And what we have been discussing today, in a way, is, is the, the function of women in the development of a public sphere in Taiwan to, to a degree. And, and the question of whether so the position of women may be different from uh, that of men also. And to me, um, the interesting um, uh, observation that Leo Ophani makes when he criticizes or he writes a book critique of Lomit High's book is that he finds it too sentimental. And he says, it's very strange, I have the same Actually, I'm from the city, almost not, not quite the same generation, but I mean, I have experiences like Lungi Thai, but I cannot sympathize with the book. So this, this whole thing that we were talking about in terms of empathy um, that she is trying to create by actually also making, as you were describing so beautifully, um, the listener go through this situation, you know, be the blank sheet on which all of this is written and actually go through the pain themselves, right? And this, for Leo Ophan Lee, who some of you have seen three weeks ago when he was here, was just too much. And so he dislikes the book very much. He writes a really devastating critique um, of the book. Um, and and I, I was wondering, you know, to, to sort of bring this back um, to the topic of women and gender, whether it's maybe a female way of telling the story, and therefore one that doesn't appear. To the European Union. And I'm just <laughs> this is a very sort of provocative question to all three of you, and then you can do something about it. Is there a difference between the female ways of telling the story that um, we have seen? Um, or, and uh, is that the reason why the European Union reacts so negatively? Anyway, do you want to well, start? I'll ask you the European Union, actually. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> And there is also Li Ao's book. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. also from male. <laughs> yeah. It's also negative. Yeah. So, very, yeah. Very, very, negative. very, very negative. So, you know, in a way, yes, thank you very much. That's sort of uh, one person. Uh, briefly introduce about Li Ao's report or criticism of the book. Because uh, I haven't read Li Ao's article. It's just the Da Jiang Da Hai Chi Pian on me. Yeah, but in which way? I, I didn't read the book oh, okay. either, I bet. But, it's but that book is uh, it's not banned in mainland China. <laughs> okay. Jo, what, what, yeah. you have read the book, you have discussed the book. Yes, you have to think about so it. And you, there are men among you, so you can... <laughs> 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 yes, go on. Yes, um, I think there, there is a female way to narrate. Mm -hmm. to tell a different story, but uh, in this book I don't think it's necessary because uh, she is a female and she tells the uh, story differently. Um, I, I like the book a lot, but I just cannot uh, cope with that as a historical book because there's a lot of real things and a lot of fake things and you don't know which one is real and which one is fake. And sometimes you see like it's really theatrical uh, and very drama dramatic and yeah. sometimes just like it's not history, but somehow people treat it like history books. So I always think there's a, a danger in that uh, kind of narrative to mix real things and fake things together. So that was my... Yeah. Yeah. But what is real and what is historical? Well, like... <laughs> <laughs> what actually happened? Maybe like the dialogue, the conversation, maybe she didn't say that. But somehow it just had to put some salt and some other things and then make it more like sentimental and and um, yeah um, dramatic yeah. um yes. yeah oh, okay oh Lena do you want to go first and then Mike yeah. oh, okay um so I think uh, if you ask if it's female or not then um, you have to ask what, what is particularly female about this story so um, this would be maybe the partaking in the war, which is from female perspective much different than from male perspective. So maybe some maybe soldiers or maybe maybe also victims, but as it put it slightly, he says uh, he says the book is very, very pro uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he still thinks it's a nationalist ish yes. work mm -hmm. and the guise of um, cosmopolitan stuff, which I think kind of misses the point of the book that um, about your point of uh, history and real, I have to follow up with you there and 
you know, challenge the idea of the real history. But as um, also Long Yutan never said that Dajan Dahai was intended to be a history. In fact, in several speeches, he expressly says it's not a history. And, you know, it's supposed to be biased and blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, there's a problem if people take it up to be real history, but that's not her intention. And finally, about the gendered question, um, I, I don't think you could really gender this book that much. I mean, if you, you could take then this approach by saying, you know, women have a particular experience of war and that's maybe a good point, but that's not really her focus. I mean, most of the interview people she talked to are, in fact, male, and it's about the male experience apart from, you know, legends and yes. stuff. It started off a little bit like it, like with this mother perspective, and yes, then yeah, she's yeah, telling yeah, the story yeah, of yeah. her mother. Yes, of yeah. course. I thought, like, okay, now we get the female yeah. history of it, but we don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt it was more in the context of family history and not really intended to be a female story. I mean, obviously, it's related. But... Well, if we relate it back to some of the things that have been said earlier, I mean, the question is whether Lumi um, Thai is able to write something um, because of the fact that 30 years of change in Taiwan, have things changed for women? Yes, they have. Um, so, you know, it does, that she can become such an authorial voice, right? Mm -hmm. um, does that have something to do with what went on earlier, what we see developing through um, sort of feminist movements elsewhere, Hong Kong, so and so forth, that then trigger um, kinds of movements in Taiwan that develop their own strength and that she's part of? Yes, go ahead. Um, I do think this female voice. Uh, so we say trope or role is something going to sometimes uses and maybe her other works, like that who may be stuff is something she you yeah. know, explores on the different persona. And I think she does sort of use this a little bit in the Dajan Dahai when she paints her character as a daughter and mother. But I don't think she really emphasizes that much in this book. Um, but I don't really know her feminist writings. But I just know she has some contributions in it. There's one very, very powerful story about a person a woman who um, uh, who has a child, um, and it's a it's a very powerful feminist story. It's very clearly, you know, uh, against the man who is involved in, in this whole thing. So, so, uh, but that's much earlier. It's like in, in the nineteen eighties that she writes the story. And so, um, she is, I think, very early already. And I remember that when she was here um, twenty years ago. <laughs> um, she actually gave this speech on different types of memory and she compared uh, the memory of Germans and Jap Japanese mm. and she uh, compared it by a very powerful metaphor um, using the structure of the German toilet vis-a-vis -vis the structure of the um, Japanese toilet as a, a way of looking back or not looking back. So the German toilets, remember, have this sort of little thing, right? So whatever you did, it sits there, right? So you have a look back. Whereas the Japanese toilets are immediately down and you don't see anything. So this, no, I mean, but I mean, this is not funny. This is actually, I think, very, very powerful metaphor. To this day, I still remember only this. <laughs> right, because, um, and she, so she's been thinking about how memory is. And I think she's also engaged in this process of making memory. Mm -hmm. And this book is a very important um, sort of part of this making the memory. Mm -hmm. The question is, for example, a book like this, is it going to be more powerful or is it equally powerful um, as the magazines that you were talking about, for example? Because both of you were making, especially Wang Yiting was making a, a sort of point about how powerful and how you know, influential these kinds of media can be. And maybe we can also start thinking about um, was that journal something that made Lumin Thai possible? Then yes, we would see the power somehow. Um, or you know, what is the degree to which a book like she's writing there, which is not history, which is fictional, which has this very strong melodramatic quality, therefore hits people, and therefore it's maybe more powerful than a theoretical discussion about Women's liberation. Yeah. Well, anyway, you go. No, just, just one point we haven't really touched, uh, or maybe implicitly, is like the point of media. Like uh, uh, I was trying to explain a little bit, you know, the way how she, so to say, got on stage and caught mm -hmm. the audience, mm -hmm. and she's she really was very good at it. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and of course, uh, she's also like 
using her, her status and her celebrity status, so to say, to, to make you know to make this possible. And other people have been writing about this as well, but not much happened. So, for example, I remember I, I always I was trying to think when did the the Angst come out? Right. So, so I mean, that was also such a bang, you know, to to the whole discussion in, in Taiwan, and that made probably more bang than any discussion seminars in universities and so on and so forth, because there people really got got into it and started discussing well, discussing what what's happening and you know it's impossible and should we put her in shade or not and you know. It was really tough, the whole discussion that was going on. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this Bajan uh, Dahai, in a way, had also this effect. And I think she's, made, she's very clever in also making use of her, you know, of, of, of her position uh, she has. And uh, there are many people who simply hate her and don't listen to what, what she has to say. But there are also many people who, who can see you know, where she is heading. And uh, so, so in a way, this book is... It's about history, it's about memory, but actually what I think what makes this book really strong, I, I, when I read it, when I listened to her, and when I then read it, I was like, wow. And the more I read it, the more I disliked it, I must say, because I don't like the way how she wrote it. Mm -hmm. I really don't understand how she can you know, put these things together the way she's putting it together. Mm -hmm. And I also think, and others have said that, that it would have taken, she would have needed more time to really get it into a, a, a proper text in a way. But, but I really think that she has, uh, that it's a very important contribution to this culture, to this history discourse, which is actually not happening in East Asia. And uh, especially now, again, I mean, we're back to zero, it feels sometimes, in the discussion of Taiwan and, and mainland, what's happening now. We have heard you know, the rhetoric for so many years now, and now we feel like we're back again. We have the same discussion and the same things are going on. And the same is, of course, true not only for, for China and Taiwan, the same is, of course, true for Korea and for Japan and China. And, and people are wondering how come, you know, there is still peace in East Asia, actually. <laughs> this is really, we have a lot of topics, like talks on how come it's very strange, you know, it's still peace in East Asia. If you listen to, to, to the rhetoric, you know, how people talk to each other. So I think she, her book is really an important contribution to this, to this discourse. And I think this is maybe also the way how she sees it. And it's maybe a bit unfair, you know, trying to sort of analyze it as a historical or as a literary work. Both is not really fair and not really what she's doing in this book. And uh, just because we have history and, and, and history and literature, I think Hayden White, of, as, you, as you of course know, has been writing about this, that even history is nothing. <laughs> it's not really an objective science or anything. So they are also very interesting to look at the plots, you know, the four different plots and the way has she, he's, you write about history. So maybe that could help a little bit to, to understand. But I think it's the question of genre we haven't really discussed. I don't know. What do you think this text is? Is it literature? Is it what is it actually? It's not an autobiography. It's not a memoir. It's a, what is it actually? We have to find a new genre, and this new genre actually was created in Stockholm for Svetlana Lechut's book with this uh, uh, polyphonic, these different voices in one in, in one text, and she has created this genre, so to say, and uh, Lundin quotes her and sees her, I think, as, as her sister in, in spirit a lot. But I think it's a big difference in how they organize their, their texts. Michael? Um. Did I hear someone? Oh. Er hat auch viel gesprochen. Darf ich auch jetzt fragen, oder? But, but you did, didn't you? Did, you? did you want to ask a question? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I mean the, the content of cosmopolitan is uh, different. If you are European, you think so that it's cosmopolitan. And if you are Asian, yeah, you think other ways. 
uh, it is so. And I mean that the content impact mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, of a cosmo cosmopolitan idea mm -hmm. is different. Does it depend on who you are? Oda? Yes, absolutely. So I think uh, cosmopolitanism is not so much about about content, about in habit. Yeah. It's more about a way how to describe mm -hmm. a certain memory. So it's not so much, you know, uh, like a national memory, so to say, is I think much more about uh, content and about mm -hmm. what it's also a way how to describe a memory, a certain yes. type, so yes. to say, of memory. Yes. Um, and it can be related to a certain nation. But cosmopolitan memory, it's not so much that you could say it has a certain uh, content. Mm -hmm. It's more like a way to describe a form of memory. For example, Chinese, Su Hai Zhu Nei Zhe Xiong Di, this idea, and American and Greek philosophy, mm -hmm. they are different. Eh? Greek philosophy of cosmopolitan yes. perhaps is quite different from. Yes. Uh, another yes. question so there are is cosmopolitan uh, memories, uh, not Michael the has a question. cosmopolitan okay. memory. Go on, Michael. Um, is there any sort of like um, like a question of genre and also the media? Um, I was wondering about since you are familiar with the Taiwanese media, I assume, um, they, may, they have a very different narrative or story, I think, of this, uh, the political situation between Taiwan and China. Um, I wonder if this is something that helps or hinders this sort of narrative provided by Long Tai's book. You, you mean the, the Taiwanese reception? or I don't know, the Taiwanese media's uh, representation uh -huh, of the okay. situation, political situation is a very different sort of story to the one which had in the book. And mm -hmm. I wonder if how the book has maybe changed that a little bit or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. You know that much better than I do. I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I can't tell you much about it. Well, I mean, at least in Taiwan it's not censored, right? So it's no, it's not censored. But, but we have or Liao and others you have mentioned in the book, there was, there was uh, I mean, there was a battle going on <laughs> about historical truth and about uh, making use of, you know, to, in order to, to sort of push Ben Tuhua. And it was a, I think what followed the book was basically a political discussion, right? Taiwan. This is how I perceive it. But, but your question was whether or not the political situation had influenced the way how the book was... Um, the, uh, the other way around. The other way around. Okay. But maybe that's too off topic for... Okay. I, I mean, in terms of drama, can it be termed as non-fiction or writing? Yeah. Because in China, in mainland China now, I think this is a well-recognized mm -hmm. drama and it's quite popular and a lot of American writers have been, uh, journalists have been mm -hmm. writing a lot about their experience and their mm -hmm. uh, journalistic activities in China. And I, but So they, they also came out around the same time, so I, at least in mainland China, actually, I, I think, Maybe some people read it as a real history. Mm -hmm. um, my feeling is that I feel her book is relatively well received in mainland China by the literary or intellectual class. That's my feeling, yeah. but I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Mm -hmm. And also as a reader, I, I'm also very, I, I agree with you, I also find it very problematic of mm -hmm. the very, overly sentimental <laughs> told, but still I still remember uh, quite a few uh, uh, fragments mm -hmm. from that and I remember those details very well and mm -hmm. I cherish them, but mm -hmm. I don't accept her master narrative. So, mm -hmm. I, so I also feel it's a bit unfair all those criticisms at the ideology behind her writing. Mm -hmm. I mean on the re reader side, it's people don't accept it wholly. And mm -hmm. I also think there might be very different receptions in mainland China and in Taiwan, given the different social mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. so, but then I, I feel her, her, her narrative has been I mean, rather successful, 
uh, changing the focus of the, that history towards more family oriented, more family histories. But then I thought of the, the film, uh, Tai Ping Wen. It was a total disaster. <laughs> it, it failed. It has a huge budget uh, by John Wu. It was directed by John Wu. But then the, it's, uh, in terms of box office, it fails so much. And they, it seems that her narrative is this rather similar story about families relocating. But then it cannot be tending to a filmic a success. So. I think what I think it's not only, so to say, a family story, because mm -hmm. we have this family story as Chamberlain White Swans and blah and blah all over the world, all the time. We read these family stories and it creates our image of either Taiwan or China. Um, so I think what makes her book different from these family stories or from these memoirs is actually that she's trying to create really a common history for Taiwan and mainland. Of course, she's, Japan, yes, it's really I mean, she's, she's creating, so to say, a common <coughs> ground or root, you know. This is not by, so to say, developing uh, whatever Chinese culture, uh, identity or something. Not at all. I think she does this by arguing historically, so to say, by saying, you know, uh, we have both our really difficult lives and so on, but I think she's really trying to create a common, a common history. And this is why I also brought up this uh, cosmopolitan memory, because cosmopolitan memory actually has to do with the acknowledgement of the history of the other, so to say. And on both sides of the Taiwan Strait, you know, they had completely different histories from themselves and also from the other. And somehow she is deconstructing, of course, these master narratives, both on both sides. And she's trying to sort of create at least partly a common history. And then she's also creating Taiwan or her own history, of course, like the the, the Western history in the present. But but I think this sort of agreement on, on on a common history, I think that's really her point. And this is what somehow makes her book, I think a good contribution, as I said, to this whole... Joey, you want to ask yes. yes. Yeah, but um, I would like to express myself in, in Chinese, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, 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 多听多记录 yeah, but there, there the, the question of impact is also really, really important. So the, when, when does she, when is society so far that it's actually possible to have this kind of an idea that she's having? And I'm just telling you one sort of anecdote in, in German history. Um, you probably know that there's this film called The Miracle of Bern, which is a film that was made in the 1990s, and it was on the 1954 uh, European Championship or no World Championship where Germany actually won mm -hmm. um, the World Championship and this is just a few years after the war and this sort of is made through that film into this event where Germany found its roots again and Germany sort of moved. and um, the film tells the story of sort of a father coming back very late from Russian um, prisoner ship and so on and so forth and it's 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 a very touching, extremely emotional, very melodramatic story, and in, 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 in a manner told but not unsimilar to what um, is happening with uh, Lomi and Hai's um, description. Um, I, we went to see that musical with my 
uh, with parents-in-law, and they actually lived his, exactly through this time. For them, this was really, really powerful to see how this family mm -hmm. is in, in crisis and then gets to back together again, and in the end, they all unify over the soccer game, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, uh, I, and only afterwards, I realized that this is a story made in the 1990s. This is a story made for German unification. This is a story that has nothing to do with a real sentiment in the 1950s um, about this game. In fact, it was forgotten very, very quickly because the Germans then lost some other game, another soccer. <laughs> and so, so, you know, so, and then you, you, to me, I mean, it was such a powerful experience also to be there with my parents and all and then, you know, relating me all these experiences. So, you know, I, I was thinking, my God, I mean, maybe Longing Kai also gets a very st strong impact of history that never so happened, right? Because this is actually, this never happened. There was never this feeling in the German sort of people of the miracle of Berlin. It's just something we made up later. And so is she making this up? I, this, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to create. But anyway, Lamo, yes. Yeah, um, I would like to ask, what do you see the future about this kind of genre of mixture of history, fictions, and memoir, and autobiography? And do you think it's a good, um, good way to create a common history than the other form of, um, of storytelling? I mean, actually, they can maybe yeah, also sure. say something because, because there are different types of storytelling in the, in the journals that we're looking at. Yeah, I think that the whole history of the history of the history, at least in the time of Taiwan, I've seen more and more like that. It's not just about the so called outside people. 不管第一代、第二代这种记忆的书写，或者是说现在其实因为呃认识台湾史，在台湾的研究也越来越多，其实也很多去呃商品化日治时期台湾的记忆，那个东西不会全部都是真的，它就是一半是有有有一些历史证据，有一些是你为了要适应当代读者的口味，然后去呃创造出来的。那要说这个东西，当然历史学家也不会认为说这个就是历史事实，可是这有点像是那个。二米教授他刚刚所说的，就是你要不要打造一个有历史感的文化？那我觉得这样子的比较普罗的，呃，可以去接触更多观众的方式，至少在我看来，我觉得是蛮好的一个企图。Lovitz and Lindausch has the last word, but Lovitz is first, and then you, and then we break for lunch. Yeah, no, it just came up, you know, that one sentence from Leo Lee's. Review of the book where he says that it took Tolstoy like five years to write War and Peace, <laughs> uh, and and she just rushed it. You know, she just didn't spend enough time. It's not. A, it's not. It, she, she didn't work seriously enough. You know, so a, a guy like Tolstoy. I mean, I don't know. In, in two hundred years, how many? You know, I compare with Tolstoy, we still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a steep comparison, and in a sense, also probably somehow unfair. But but. But Tolstoy, uh, there is an agreement that although this is a novel, uh, everybody says it's a novel, clearly, but it does to some extent, and it's about war and peace, you know, it says it, it, it does give some uh, credit to, to history, you know, so, so of course it's, you know, it's, it, as I said, it's a bit unfair to compare, but I mean, there are these examples where, where, where you have the genres meet, in a sense, although on a very high level. <laughs> Uh, I like to be a cosmopolitan too, <laughs> and I I like to uh, know. Uh, as I was in Japan, I told the Japanese, "Can we construct a East Asian Union? East Asia. We learn from German, from European, and construct a German uh, East Asian Union." Uh, in the, this union, there are chi China, Korea, Japan, and other East Asian countries. And uh, a Japanese professor told me, you have to wait 100 years. Even now, after 100 years, your idea cannot be realized. So I was very shocked. My question is, has a long time she liked to, to be a cosmopolitan? Had she an idea as the first step? to construct an East Asian Union. <laughs> okay, now you three get to answer <laughs> and then we get to eat. Huh? Okay. <laughs> you wanted to use it.
Well, I actually think you have to ask Lung Tai tomorrow yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But I, may, may I just say one, one, one thing, again, also what Lauren said, I mean, you said about, you know, what form do we need? Uh, I think there's no, no correct or wrong or anything form, but I think it's very interesting also what Barbara said right now, that when she was watching this film, I think in order to access, for example, for example, the trauma, you have to create a frame, how to narrate something. And for example, when you think about the Holocaust, basically 20 years nothing happened. Holocaust did not exist. It was only invented almost 20 years later. You had no discussion of the Holocaust. You had only a discussion of, for example, what we call in German, of the soldiers coming home. But Holocaust did not exist in the German discourse for almost 20 years. So what happened was not the professors in the university, but what happened was basically Shinta's listed that made the Holocaust also, you know, accessible. It's and then I think again media is so important. Again. Yeah. It's again media which is so important. And maybe not the history books that also create this sort of because this was also cause of public film. It went everywhere. And this is also how Holocaust last year that was in a way cosmopolitanized. Even it had different forms in every corner of the world. Okay, I want to thank the three speakers and of course they get kind of like a student who could I'm sure that all the students oh. want to kiss you. Wow. And it's a little bit good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then of course there are a few roses too because it's the time of year. But they are actually really <laughs>